Bell's got his mock draft 3.0, which was just released on ESPN.com this morning. Fresh access, folks. He's got five quarterbacks going in the top 12 picks. No surprises at the top. Williams, Daniels, and Drake May going one, two, and three. Former Heisman winner, current ESPN analyst, RG3, had some advice for Caleb if he were to go number one overall to Chicago. Listen up. Caleb Williams should pull a Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. After everything that's happened with just Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? This is the organization that has my best interest at heart, and they're going to help develop me into the player that I want to become. After the Bears took Justin Fields, the 11th pick in the draft, and turned him into a sixth round pick in the 2025 draft by trading him to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, this organization is going to help get me where I want to go. Mm, strong take, pulling Eli Manning. Let's not forget, he had Archie and Peyton. Uh, Mel, how should Caleb feel about potentially being drafted to the Bears? Happy. You're in the NFC. Uh, you're not in the AFC with all those other great quarterbacks. You're going with a team with Ryan Poles. Jim's going to do the things necessary to build that talent base around the quarterback, which he has started to do. They had the ninth pick. They maybe trade down, recoup that second round pick they lost for Montez Sweat. Remember, Ryan Poles was the director of college scouting in Kansas City when they drafted Patrick Mahomes. We always saw some Patrick Mahomes and Caleb Williams. That's why this pick makes so much sense. So, no, I think mean, Caleb will be happy. I will agree with RG3. This was a gift to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a gift. And Shannon knows I'm in Baltimore, uh, you know, here with the crab cakes and land of pleasant living. And I, the last thing we want to see is Justin Fields and the Baltimore and the, and the Baltimore Ravens division with the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was a gift. They should have kept Justin Fields. They should have let it play out. Troy Aikman was there. They drafted Steve Walsh, let it play out, and then traded Walsh, wrote a one, two, and a three. So to me, I wouldn't have given him away to the Steelers, but I agree with the number one overall pick, certainly being Caleb Williams. And that's where he should want to play, and I think he will thrive there in that division with the Chicago Bears. But plus, and the, uh, the Bears have already done a great job. They, uh, DJ Moore, they got DJ Moore last year. They traded for Keenan Allen. They got uh, Everett, a uh, 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 pass catching tight end from the Ram. Uh, DeAndre Swift, they got him from the Eagles. Now, for me, Mel, you said trade down and try to recruit that second. I'm moving up to try to get the tackle out of Notre Dame because I want to have protection for my money. It doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank. You got to have guards to protect it. And so the most valuable asset that you have now is Caleb Williams. So if I'm them, I'm going to move up to make sure I try to get the big tackle out of Notre Dame because I've gotten skill position and I can go get a third. I can get a th uh, another receiver late, later in the draft, maybe third or fourth round. But I got nine High skill position with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, and Everett at tight end, pass catching tight ends. I like what they've done so far, but now they've got to get somebody to, to protect Caleb Williams. Well, let me chime in here before I ask the next question by saying this. I totally, mm -hmm. I totally disagree with RG3. I think he's totally wrong yeah, on this sure. in this particular situation because I think that obviously it's a new regime. I knew Eva Flus is still there, but Ryan Poles taking over. There's no longer Ryan Pace there. It's Ryan Poles, and obviously you're moving in a different direction give them an opportunity and like you said Shannon there is some talent on there so I certainly wouldn't I wouldn't go to Eli Manning right if I'm Caleb Williams I will say I will ask you this question though Mel when you are you certain the number one overall pick is going to be Caleb Williams because we've been hearing the Dan Orlovskis of the world and others talking about Jaden Daniels out of LSU and, and so are you sure is that definitely going to be the number one overall pick I think 1,000% it's going to be Caleb, and I think it's, it should be Caleb. In 2022, he was spectacular. He fell off this year. Remember, uh, the Notre Dame game started. He was really good up till Notre Dame game, and they had a, had a bad offensive line. Remember, Andrew Voorhees was the great player on that line, drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the seventh round. Why? Because he had the injury combine, had her medically registered. He's going to start on that Raven offensive line this year, right? Jordan Addison is number one receiver. He didn't have him. So Caleb Williams will be the number one pick overall to the Chicago Bears. To Shannon's point about the old line, they're, I think they're okay there. They, you know, think about right, they drafted at right tackle. You got Jones, you got the interior, they added some pieces at center. They can find a guard. In the, in the down the line get that second round pick back move down and then look at that pass rusher opposite Montez Sweat. Jared Verse at nine might be a little high. They move down. They can look at him. They can look at Leatu Latu from UCLA. Chop Robinson, Penn State, by moving down and recouping that second-round draft choice. And then looking, as you say, Shannon, to the offensive line, the interior, maybe in that third, fourth, fifth-round area where there's some depth at that guard spot.
All right, Mel, you know I'm going to make this about me. I want the Giants to draft a quarterback. As we mentioned <laughs> earlier, five quarterbacks in the top 12, but no Michael Penix Jr. in the first round. A lot of people raved about his combine performance. Why is he not projected to go in that first round? Well, it's a second round grade is the injuries, really, Molly. He had four different in okay. injuries. He's on about the shoulder, the knee, and then the performance in the national title game, off-platform throws. He's not as effective as some of these other quarterbacks. Obviously, second round, Will Levis last year had a high grade on Will. He went in this early second round. Michael Penix Jr., of course, Will had that injury banged up in Kentucky with that bad offensive line. Michael Penix Jr. at Indiana, those injuries we talked about. But then, two outstanding years for the Washington Huskies with great talent around them. Being a second round pick, nothing wrong with that if he does go in round two or to somebody trading back into the first. It's hard to find a team in that mid to late first that is desperate for a quarterback, but somebody could trade back in and land Michael Penix Jr. If, say, a Bo Nix goes to Denver, if Sean Payton sees a little Drew Brees in Bo Nix and takes him at 12 like I'm projecting right now. So Michael Penix Jr. right now could be a late one early to mid two. I'm just getting ready to ask you that, Mel. When I'm looking at Caleb, you're looking at you just brought up Penix Jr. Uh, you hear the name J.J. McCarthy. You hear others. Who are legitimate first-round picks at the quarterback spot? Because there's like ten different quarterbacks. Great question. Be in the yeah, they're overdrafted usually, and that's what you got to trust your ratings. And any on overdraft, if you rank the guys, I have J.J. at that 21-23 spot. Top 10's overdrafting. Bo Nix, same thing. Over, but that's what happens. What you got to guard against is the E.J. Manuel. The you go to you know with Jake Locke or you go to Christian Ponder. So you, when you grade players, that's what you protect. And Daniel Jones at six. I didn't have him that high. So you protect against overdrafting, even though I like Daniel Jones. So I think when you look at it, if you rank the players for a reason, you spend all the time doing it. It protects you from doing exactly that, taking a quarterback way too high. In the case of the top three, I don't think they will. In terms of McCarthy, I think he will be a little over. Overdrafted. Certainly, Bo Nix a little overdrafted as well. Justin Fields right now, arguably a backup. I'm just curious, where does he rank among these top quarterbacks? It had been right in there uh, behind Caleb. I mean, Justin Fields, I think, can beat out Russell Wilson. I think he can work in unison with Russell. If Russell can recreate the glory days in Seattle, you can still work Justin in with packages to keep those defensive coordinators figuring it out all yeah. week. they got to have a lot of sleepless nights with Russell and then Justin. So you can do that. Where you couldn't do it with Kenny Pickett, you can do it with Justin Fields. Justin Fields should be a Chicago Bear. This notion you can't have two young quarterbacks, give me a break. They had Aikman, they brought in Steve Walsh. How'd that work out? Pretty all going good because they traded Walsh and got like a one, a two, and a three. They had Alex Smith, they drafted Mahomes. That worked out pretty all going good too because Alex Smith wasn't happy when they drafted Mahomes, but he was professionally dealt with it. Like we talked about right have those two would have been fine then if if Justin's a guy you can trade Caleb if Justin's not the guy what have you lost you got to you gave him away for a six that could be gone before that's a giveaway but in Pittsburgh guys this is a home run a grand slam to have Justin Fields at age 25 with Russell Wilson at age 35 it's a win-win for the Pittsburgh Steelers and horrible for the Bengals the Browns and our Baltimore Ravens I agree with everything you said because we got but potentially the Pittsburgh Steelers got their quarterback for 2024 and they have their quarterback on their roster for 2025 and beyond. But I like the fact what you said, Mel. If I'm if I'm if I'm um, Justin Fields, I'm coming in there. I'm coming in there to compete. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to say no, son. You're not playing mm -hmm. because when I go out there to practice, I'm gonna light the defense up. When I'm on scout team, I'm gonna light the defense up. I'm gonna show. It's, I'm gonna make it virtually impossible for you not to get me some reps during the course of the game because Justin Fields can be a he can be a younger version of Russell Wilson. His legs are more dynamic than Russell Wilson's legs were when he got into the league. Now I'm not saying he's the accurate passer that Russ is because Russ still can throw the deep ball. But I think the mistake that the Bears made is that you know everybody knew the likelihood of them passing on Bryce Young, Caleb Williams, C.J. Stroud in back-to-back -back drafts were not going to happen. I would have traded Justin Fields at the trade deadline because that's when he had the most value, Mel. I know you got to get rid of every three to four years they come out with a new body style on a car. Okay, I already know you done spent $10 million on this car. This new body. You getting rid of the old body style. Everybody knows that. I'm not going to give you fair market value mail on something I know you've got to get rid of. So why would any of the 30 other teams, 31 other teams, give them fair market value for Justin Fields when I know you got to get rid of him? I know you're not going to keep him there to have Caleb Williams looking over his shoulder. You know that. I know that. I get what happened back in 89. Who cares, 89. Shannon? 
I don't care. I say, I don't buy into this looking over his shoulder. Who cares? That's, that's the bottom line. Everybody, okay. you, you don't have a quarterback there to develop the other quarterback. It's the coach's job to develop quarterbacks, not the backup quarterback's job or the other quarterback's job to mentor that guy or get along with that guy. I don't know if, uh, if Montana and Young were getting along too great back in the day. I'm sure Aikman and Walsh, when Aikman was there and Walsh was probably because I was Jimmy Johnson's guy at Miami, right? I don't think Mayo. that went over very well. Mayo. It worked out where Troy was the guy and they traded Walsh. What do, why do I, we worry about the feelings of a young quarterback? Too bad. Deal with. You bet. I tell you what, Mayo, you better care because you're going to have to pay that guy a quarter of a billion dollars in three and a half to four years. You better care if he's looking over his shoulder because oh, you're about to have to oh, drop a bag for 300 million. It'll, 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 it's playing. It's, it's going to play out long before that. It'll play out in 2024, but let it play out because you got nothing for Justin. So if Justin isn't the guy, who cares? You gave him away. You gifted him to the Pittsburgh Steelers for nothing. Well, you held on. You held on to it, thinking you could get more. But well, we don't know who we're going to take. Everybody knew you was going to take Caleb. But then Williams. keep him. Once that happens, Shannon, then keep him. Keep <laughs> him.